All right, we're going to open up this uh, session for questions for the panel. And if you uh, have a question, we will get a mic to you so everyone in the room can hear your question. We have one up front. Thank you so much. Enjoyed each one of your talks. Um, my name's Laura Armstrong. I'm the chief nurse, so you may, you probably, I didn't have to say that once you hear my questions, but I just want to introduce myself and thank you all for being here. Just loved each one of your perspectives and points of view. Um, I think I want to start with Debbie, if that's okay. I was really interested in what you were saying about the impact of decentralized care that's being delivered in it led me to think, and there's many examples of it here, but some new challenges that we're facing in our big, beautiful, brand new, single room NICU. And um, I know a lot of my colleagues around the country that have gone to this and that in pediatrics, but then in adults with the single room requirements. Um, just interested about um, what you're seeing on the horizon for this and what we could do in, um, to make sure we're ensuring safe care and that we're providing all health care providers, but particularly the nurse that is responsible for um, each of their patients in their assignment in such a big geography. That is a great question. And I think um, that's a lot of health care architects today that are really specialized in health care are doing a lot of research on those environments. And from my perspective, that landscape of the long hallways and the decentralized care where there's not the collaboration on the unit that takes place. And, the, and, and one thing that's come up recently is the mentoring of the younger nurses by the older nurses were all in separate areas. And so that mentoring is really, is disappeared in that process. And so the, the ramifications of a decentralized unit have, had not really been fully baked when it was implemented. But technology is one of the solutions and one of the keys to improving the communication between the caregivers. And so finding um, you know, solutions like, like you have here at Texas Children's to help incorporate into you know, a collaborative environment is, is essential. I, I know that um, there are some of my colleagues in here that have, have really researched and and define some of those uh, best practices. I think it's continuing to evolve. But I think being at the table um, and being part of that research to really evaluate how this, um, you know, your new hospital has become, uh, what, what challenges have you had, what challenges have come from that and how to document that so that other people are not creating those same scenarios. I think the intent to have the nurses at the bedside was really a, a, a beautiful thing, but there, you know, the nursing culture is very collaborative. And when I do some of my post-occupancy evaluations, the nurses sometimes say they feel very alone in their care and they don't have the person to say, hey, can you come help me um, turn this patient? Or, or you know, in the NICU, the perfect example is you know, you've gone from this open bay unit to the private rooms and everyone, you know, NICU nurses would say, hey, watch my baby. I'm going down the hall to use the restroom or I need to um, talk to the family about something, watch my baby. And so watching and really um, ha having that backup and, and that mentoring for those younger nurses has really, as a nursing community, we really are gonna have to be creative in how to continue um, so your question as far as some, the impacts, uh, and there have been, there's been some research and, and I can, you know, give you more resources on the impacts of decentralized care and those sort of things. Um, but I think there's always two sides of a coin and, and knowing one of the keys that I find being involved in projects is asking the right questions. So if I'm asking, uh, someone that's going from a completely different model and changing their, complete have you done a lean process analysis to be sure that the 
the environment you're creating supports the process that you have in place now or the process that you're going to be going to. And so, you know, it's a lot of <coughs> forecasting and it's a lot of work on our parts, you know, in these offices of excellence and, and uh, safety offices to be aligned together so that the, the missions that we're trying to accomplish, accomplish in patient safety, you know, improved outcomes, lean, and lean workflow processes is thought about from the beginning really in alignment. And just as, as Tim was talking about, you know, that roadmap and, and lining up all the devices, we really have to do that in our, um, you know, interprofessional uh, relationships as well. So I think the future is really going to be an interprofessional uh, process and um, I hope that that, that you great segue into my question for Joyce. <laughs>